This is part two to the one man roller setup video. And in this one, we're hopefully gonna be solving the problems we faced in the first video. So basically the micro vibrations that the bike was sending through to the camera, into the gimbal, into the focusing system, into the stabilization system. And the first piece of the puzzle, the first thing to test out has arrived today. This is the Insta360 vibration dampener. It's meant to be used with like their 1X2s and 1X3 360 cameras. But today we're gonna be trying it out with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3. So this is the only part that has arrived so far and I'm too eager to wait for everything else to arrive. So this is the first test, first setup we're going to do with the Insta360 vibration dampener and the Osmo Pocket 3. And that's basically what it does. Hopefully it just gets rid of the micro vibrations sent through to the camera. But uh, I'm not 100% sure on this setup. The only way to know is to test it out. In the last video, people were freaking out about how I had it mounted with just this tiny GoPro sticky mount. So today we're gonna be doing a bit of an upgrade to this kind of bigger surface area Insta360 sticky mount. And if this is too sketchy as well, we're gonna change it up from there. We're just gonna be doing a lot of tests in this video, trying to perfect the setup. All right, first of all, let's try and get this, get this one off. It's on there, guys. Oh my God. I don't think that was coming off. Unless I crashed or something, this thing is stuck down on there good. <clears throat> oh, there we go. That was stuck on there real good. Give the area a bit of a clean. These like alcohol wipes, a bit of a dry wipe as well. Let's be precise with this. Right about there, right about there. That looks goofy on the back of the bike. Yeah. The other one was kind of subtle. This one looks a lot more goofy, but that surface area is a lot larger. So hopefully it's not as sketchy. They do say to wait 24 hours before you mount something on there, but I feel like it won't hurt to do a quick test. So, wow, wow. If you guys thought the last setup was sketchy, I don't know what you guys are gonna say about this. Oh man, wow, okay. <laughs> Shake the bike around a bit. The vibration definitely looks like it's doing its job. <laughs> well, this is the first configuration I have whipped up. It's a little sketchy, as you can see. I feel like it will do the job though, just cruising normally. We're gonna go out for a quick test. We're gonna go out for a ride, test this setup really quickly because I'm super eager to see what it looks like and if this Insta360 vibration dampener can actually do anything to minimize the vibrations going into the sensor, of the gimbal and everything like that. We don't have a subject, so just gonna get some smooth shots of the scenery and stuff. Yeah, this is a pretty sketchy setup. I know what you guys are gonna say about this, but don't worry, I do have DJI carry fresh for a year. So if anything happens, I'm covered. I paid that extra money for the insurance. So. so yeah, I guess we can call this setup version two, test one. And we out on the bike. Can you guys notice anything different? If you can, drop a comment. Let me know if you notice anything, anything different, anything looking a bit, a bit off, a bit better. We've just come to the big bridge. It's a bit windy out, so that might affect the footage a little bit, but uh, we're just gonna get some test shots, see if this thing even works. Yeah, 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 whoa! Yeah, oh, it's very windy. That's definitely gonna affect it. Basically, this is a vibration dampener. You guys have probably heard of a vibration dampener for phones, like the quad lock vibration dampener. I remember when I first got my quad lock, I didn't have a vibration dampener. I put my phone, my old iPhone 11 Pro on there, and uh, it messed the camera up real good. So that's why you get one of these things. Little vibration dampener. Reduces the vibration going on the phone. It does shake around a lot more, but that is hopefully what this is going to do. So it should hopefully reduce the vibrations going into the Osmo Pocket 3 and hopefully stop it from getting damaged. But I'm not sure if it will make for a smoother shot. It's worth a test. Let's test this out over the bridge, see what we can get. All right, I just did a quick pass across the bridge. The Osmo Pocket is still here, so that is amazing news. We're going to check out the footage now. I'm going to check it out on the phone so I can see it better. I don't have high hopes for this, for this, uh, for this one but we'll see first shot let's see i can't tell on the phone i don't know i can't tell it looks like there's way less it actually looks like oh up there in the mountain looks like there's a bit of fuzziness nowhere near as much as when as before as the old setup oh that looks smooth no way no way oh a bit of wobble there over that little crate See, when I rev the engine, it's not actually too bad. Well, I'm happy about the Osmo Pocket not getting damaged anymore. I feel like it won't be damaged unless it falls off. Oh, that's a sick shot. Yeah, it's still micro vibrating a little bit, but I think that's just because of the bumps and because it's pretty windy today. But other than that, that is way, way better. That's, that's promising. That means the next upgrade that I get for this setup is gonna make it even better. So 
that setup actually did pretty well. I'd say that's about a 10 to 15% increase in stability. It is now the next day and another package has arrived. This I believe is the solution to all of my problems and should hopefully fix all the stabilization, pulsing, focusing issues. So let's open up the packaging right here. So here it is right out of the bag. This is the fourth axis stabilization system made by Scotty Make Stuff. He's actually here in Australia, in New South Wales actually. So I thought that was pretty cool. This came in like a day. I actually ordered it straight after filming yesterday and it arrived straight away, which was crazy. But this is actually their new edition of the fourth axis stabilization. They have two older editions and this is the third, I believe. I've been talking to them about the idea I have and they sent me the third version a little bit early. It's literally about to come out very soon. So I'm gonna learn how to get this thing set up and then put the Osmo Pocket 3 onto it and put it to the test. And actually also I got this right here. It is a Osmo Pocket 3 case that has like a bunch of mounts on it. You can mount mics, lights, whatever, whatever you really need to it. And it also has a bunch of different mounting points where you can mount the Osmo Pocket in different ways. A bunch of people were actually commenting saying the reason there is pulsing and stuff like that is because the Osmo Pocket is mounted upright. So they're saying it would help a little bit if we mounted it like this. We're also going to be trying that in today's video, a bunch of setups we're going to be trying out. So yeah. Let's just go uh, put all this stuff together, run through all the tests and see which setup I come up with that is the best. I was absolutely running, not trying to keep it stable at all. Wonder if this thing works. It looks like it's making it worse, but you know, that's the magic. All right, so I've just been running around for the past half an hour with this thing, trying to get it set up. They said there's a bit of a learning curve to getting this thing set up. You have to adjust the payload, the dampening, how many weights you use, depending on what you're using it for. And uh, basically what this thing does is stabilize the fourth access so this as you can see as you're walking if you've used a gimbal before you would know what the ninja walk is that's what you do to get absolute stable footage out of the gimbal because they usually can't stabilize the fourth axis so this is basically inbuilt ninja walk so as you could probably see from that footage there i was sprinting there was no ninja walk there and this thing was doing its job. It looked like it was making the footage worse, but it was actually compensating for my running and large footsteps. So no need for the ninja walk and stuff like that. So basically we're gonna take the handle off, mount this thing onto the bike, and hopefully the bumps that I hit, the vibrations that go through it are all kind of dampened and taken away by this little system we have here. There's a lot of configurations, a lot of ways we can set this thing up. So I'm gonna be out riding for quite a while today, figuring out the best way to have this thing set up. But fingers crossed, it does what we need it to do, so let's go test it out. All right, we are back out at the same spot, different day. It's actually a bit windier today, but this is the first configuration we're gonna go with. It's just the Insta360 vibration dampener, but with the camera mounted on its side with the Scotty Make Stuff Pro case, we're just gonna take the protection cap off, turn it on. People in the comments said this should help or do something, so I'm gonna test it out, see what it does. This will be the first test for today. First configuration here, let's see how it looks. Still has a little bit of the vibration. It does look a little bit better, a bit more grounded. It has a grounded feeling. There's still those little micro vibrations though off in the distance in the corner of the frames, but it is a lot more grounded and pretty smooth looking. Still has the vibration dampener connected, so this is a pretty good setup. Now this is the next configuration setup we have. It's the Scotty Make Stuff fourth axis stabilizer on its own. We have it set up to what I think should do the job. I really hope it doesn't come all the way down and hit that. It shouldn't go that far down anyway, unless I hit a huge pothole, which I'd want to avoid anyways. And in case anything crazy happens, I'm going to have this secondary camera hooked up. <laughs> so we can see the carnage that happens, but hopefully fingers crossed, nothing, nothing happens. Check this out, boom. See that little rock fly over the camera? That's a bit sketchy. But here we go, what we've been waiting for, the fourth axis stabilizer, check it out. To me, it's looking pretty smooth. Look how much it vibrates there from the other angle and here it's just smooth. There are slight little micro vibrations here and there when the bike gets to a certain rev range, but when just revving it up and clicking through the gears, you can hear me clicking through the gears, and compared to the first time I ever used this setup, it is not pulsing or vibrating nowhere near as much. So this is definitely a big success and we still have other setups to try. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. That looks really good. Oh, a bit of wobble there still over that crate. Might have to adjust the dampening settings. But just on the road, that compared to the original setup, that is beautiful. That setup is really good. Now we're going to pair it with the Insta360 vibration dampener and hopefully it's even better. I'm not too sure whether to put the vibration dampener here or here. I'm going to put it up here for this test. Doesn't look that good. I'm going to put it down the bottom and see what, see what looks better. So let's just run that. All right, now with the fourth axis paired with the vibration dampener, this footage is looking pretty smooth. I can't lie. Look how much the fourth axis axis is dropping down there and it still looks smooth on the right but i honestly don't know if it can get any better looking than this if it did look any better it would basically look like it's ai generated but it can't be absolutely perfect even when i'm filming rollers just normally it never looks 100 percent smooth here I'm just pulling in the clutch and doing revs to see if the vibrations sent from the engine alone are causing any more vibrations and it looks like it's completely rid of it. So I think I just need to mess around with the dampening settings and how much weight I use on the fourth axis. And also the wind is probably affecting any other vibrations a lot, so. Another success, camera's not gone yet again. Let's watch back the footage. Looks good. I have nothing else to say. It just keeps getting better each time. It looks good. Gonna hit this crate. Yeah, a bit of vibration on the crate, but what can you do about that? I'm gonna change the setup. I'm gonna put the vibration dampener at the bottom, at the base, see what that does, but this looks good. All right, vibration dampener mounted in a different spot. This setup isn't terrible, but I do think the setup before this is superior to this one. The weight of the fourth axis and the way it's distributed on top of the vibration dampener is kind of dragging it off to the left, I noticed, and making the shot look slanted depending on which way it's being pulled. The drag and weight from the fourth axis stabilization actually like it was pulling down and twisting the vibration dampener to the right so i feel like it wasn't even doing its job just then so i think it's a better mount point up at the top here so i'm not sure how that footage looked probably similar to before but it was like dragging off so and i'm sure over time i'll think of better ways to set it up and other setups to do so but this setup compared to the first time i ever used it looks amazing all we got to do now find a subject to get rollers off and make some movies Oh, this is cool. Look at these trees. All right, we're out on the bike. We got Rick behind me here. He's helping me out again. He's going to be the subject of the test. We've just ridden about half an hour, 45 minutes. So there's a bit of traffic. Here we are. These roads, these back roads look sick. Oh, look at this. This is mad, bro. It's got the R1. I'm going to find some spots, set up the, the new setup and see how it goes. Even on this road with all this scenery it would look so cool. Oh, look at this. That's a cool photo spot. Yeah. Oh, no way. <laughs> They're getting rollers too. They've got the proper one. And we've got the little bike one. Oh, yeah, we should pull up on them and be like, oh, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> what are the chances? They're getting rollers in the same spot as us. What the heck? All right, let's get the setup out. Yeah, that's, that's basically... Yeah, that was deep. Oh, they're gone. That was a quick setup. <laughs> we'll probably see them up there, hey? Oh, jeez, I nearly sidekicked it, bro. What do you think of my little setup? I just, I just watched your videos yesterday, actually. Oh, no way. <laughs> I was like, oh, what if he just got one there? What are the chances? That's crazy. I'm good. How are you? Nick. Jesse. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. That's a beautiful rig. Hey. Milu, nice to meet you. Jesse, nice Milu. to meet you too. He's uh, one of my friends by FPV and stuff. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We went to the Sigley Bridge, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was riding past and we were getting this one set up and we saw the rig on the back and I was like, oh, what? I gotta get them to see my little, <laughs> my little. Set up. You're doing great videos. I appreciate it. Keep going. Thank you. What's your name again, sorry? Jesse. Jesse Miller. No worries.
pulse yet. Like it will pulse every now and then, but that is so much better than last time, hey. This is sick. That was cool, yeah. This is clean. Oh, there we go, there's a bit. Not a lot though, like, no, that wasn't even that noticeable. Mm. Oh yeah, that punch up was sick. But I'd say there's more usable footage than not now. Last time it was more not usable footage than usable yeah, footage. Yeah, you had to be, you had to have the clutch in. Yeah. The weight would help. More weight. Mm. Like extra weight here. Yeah. Yeah, true. Does it ever get this high up? No, I don't think so. Okay, that's good. Oh, wait, actually, I just remembered. I did this setup with some with some tape. Like, it stopped the wobble here. So I think, like, I feel like that'll do something. The base section was wobbling around a tiny bit because it's rubber, kind of kind of like rubbery plastic. So now this is holding down. Hopefully that gives it a little bit more stability. So test number two, let's see how this looks. Let's get the gimbal centered. All you got to do is just double tap. Double tap him and active track is enabled. Now you go ride your ride. And hopefully it doesn't lose tracking and gets a smooth shot. It does lose tracking sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, you just double tap your subject. Active track is enabled and we're good to go. So...
for you. To conclude, I am super happy with how the results and how this setup turned out. Comparing this footage to the first attempt, it is clear how much smoother it looks and less pulsing. Revving the engine was the main problem in my first video, but the vibration dampers and the fourth axis gimbal completely erased that problem. Over time though, I believe I can further improve this setup by maybe adding more weight to the fourth axis gimbal because sometimes it was completely locking out at the top, causing it to pulse. I think more weight attached will hopefully stop it from extending too far up. Also, some sort of wind shield could improve the setup a lot. I couldn't be happier with how this all turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Massive thanks to Rick for helping me film and the Scotty Make Stuff team for helping me out with the fourth axis gimbal setup. If you are interested in the fourth axis stabilizer, they provided me with an affiliate link that is in the description along with links to all the cameras and gear I use in my videos. And it helps me out so much if you do end up using these links. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please show this with some respect. Click here for more videos like it and I'll see you over there.